Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Fireman Dan and welcome back to Space Engineers and let me introduce you to Industrial Overhaul Mod. This is a big one, uh, so sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy the video. So what is Industrial Overhaul Mod? Well, it is a mod that changes how the game works it changes all your components around changes your ores around and yeah look just look there's a lot of stuff going on here and i'll throw a link to the description of this down below so let's get started so first thing first is the ore so here's some of the new ores you got coal sulfur oil sand copper lithium bauxite Titanium, tantalum, if I'm saying that right, and niter, which replaces magnesium. These are the various places that each ore can be produced, and this is the end result. You can pause this video and look over this if you want. I also should note that ores can also be crushed and purified once the required technology has been unlocked, and they provide a bonus. So another thing to know about ores is, as you know by vanilla game, that your ores are scattered around in smaller veins and they kind of they're kind of intermixed in one another. With this mod, the ores are spread out much further apart. They are single vein ores, so you may have just coal, just iron, just oil sand, but they are very very big ores the large sizes and what this does is this gives you a little, little bit of an engineering challenge right so you got to go out you got to find the ores first then you got to dig it up and then you got to transport it back to your base of operations so not only does it give you the transportation route of engineering but it also encourages more static mining facilities if you will so if you go in the workshop you see all these various machines that people built that are meant for mining but they're essentially useless because the ores you're mining in the vanilla game are very very tiny what's the point of them well this is the point of them right here now let's go down this list here so this is a smelter it takes stone with medium yield and the reason this is on here is it helps you get started at the at the beginning of the game because stone has some basic ores in it some of the basic ores in it but not a lot and not all of them so it like i said it, it just helps you get going kind of essentially this is like your basic refinery if you will and you can throw scrap metal in there and it also make iron copper silico nickel nickel and cobalt right smelter the regular refinery high yield of stone and then all this silver gold platinum bauxite titanium tantalum and coal low yield gold up next we have the chemical refinery which makes niter, lithium, sulfur, and coal high yield. And then finally the uranium centrifuge which is, well, uranium. And I should note one of the things that I did not put on here. Oh, I can't, I actually cannot remember what it's called but there you can, it recovers some of your spent uranium fuel so instead of it being like one to one or maybe you may recover i don't know what the percentage is 0.1 of it so you may be actually using 0.9 of out of every 0.1 and you're getting some of it back over this way ignore that that's just for power on the grid is your oil production yes oil like i said oil sand so oil so first off you go out and you find your oil sand and the oil sand must be separated in into crude oil and uh bit, bitumen extractor i don't know if i'm saying that right which is this thingy from here you come over to here and then crude oil can then be refined into oil in the oil cracker this is the oil cracker pretty big huh up next Fuel oil is then further refined into gasoline, 
in a gasoline refinery to produce usable fuel. This is a gasoline refinery. Or into rocket fuel. This is a rocket fuel refinery. Yes, we ha now have rocket engines. They're more powerful than hydrogen, but they use rocket fuel. And they're, yeah, space and getting up to space and such. And lastly, but not least, and this is kind of on the along the lines of the oil refinery, but not exactly. So this is, is a synthetic polymer plant. And it says synthetic polymer can be produced in the, well, synthetic binaries if oil is in short supply. If you do not have oil and you need your synthetic stuff, which we'll go over that on that way over there, or on the other side, you can use this right here. Up next is your your assembly area, right? This is your refinery stuff. Essentially, this is your refinery right here, refinery line, and this is your oil production, but. Technically, it's part of your refineries because, well, we need to create oil. So here's how th how this works. You got tiers. Tier one through tier five. One, two, three, four, five. When you first start off, this is what you get. You get your survival kit. You get your smelter, and you get your assembling bench. And in this tier, this is the resources you use: iron. Copper, silicon, nickel, and these are the components you can produce, right? So your survival kit, you put stuff in, you get stuff out. Your smelter, you put stuff in, you put your ores in, and you get stuff out of it. I don't even know why it's coming up synthetic back to where's this where's the smelter? I don't know. It's in there somewhere. I think this is your basic refinery, if you will. And then over here is your assembling bench. And here's why this is interesting. There are no conveyor ports on this assembling bench. So if you want something, right? So let's say you want steel plate. You need iron, right? Let me get some, grab some iron here. Iron, 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 uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, iron ore, well, iron ingots. So let's say five, spawn object. You have to physically stick what you want in here. And then, production, you can make whatever you want. And then you have to physically pull it out. Like I said, no conveyor ports on this. None whatsoever. So this is literally very, very basic getting you started. So from here, you might move up to tier two, which is your automation stuff. The reason why it's called automation is you no longer need your workbench to do it. And these are your resources, and these are your components you can build. And you get the fabricator, the wire draw, I guess I can go through some of this. Fabricator produces battery power cells, electromagnets, heating elements, light bulbs, basic computers, construction components, metal grids. The wire draw gives you wires, copper, gold, and superconductors. Your plate stamp, it makes your plates. Armored plate, composite, aluminum, steel, and titanium. Your extruder, this is your pipes. Girders, large and small. Your ceramics, your ceramics makes your glass stuff. Armored glass, ceramic, and glass. And this one is cement kiln. And yes, cement makes concrete. And this is interesting because you actually get concrete blocks and you also get roads and lastly the incinerator the only incinerator does is it just you stick stuff in here you don't want and it it gets rid of it up next oh oh shot it's tier 
three, which is your industrial. These are your resources. These are your components. Feel free to pause the video. Refinery, it refines everything else. Your assembler, this is your full-blown assembler. But, I want you to note something. Look what you can make. Right? Not a lot. In fact, steel plates, not here. So, uh, what do you do? Well, this is the interesting thing about the industrial overhaul mod. Beforehand, you go through your basic assembler to your assembler, and you can get rid of your basic assembler, right? Not anymore. You actually need tier one, you need tier two, and then you need tier three, and you need all of them. You have to keep them to keep progressing down the line. You can't make everything in tier three that you can make in tier two. So you still need tier two to make the items you need for tier three and the, the, the parts and stuff that you need. Or your, well, I don't know, uh, your tanks and all that. So whenever you build your base, you're going to have to keep all of this. And you're going to have to plan to keep all of this, right? Look how big that is. Ignore this. Look how big that is. You're going to need all of this. All of it. All of it. So next up is your bitumen extractor. And this was over there, but it's thrown in here because your synthetics and your oil crackers. That was over there, so th those two are double. Your chemical refiner. Your chemical refiner was, it was over there because it's part of a tier three. Micro electronics factory. Produces advanced computers, basic computers, sensor clusters, displays, and thermocouple. Right, so electronics. Auto loom. This is your fabric stuff. And by fabric, it's synthetic fabric and your parachutes. And your munitions. This produces all your munitions. So if you are using one of these, I don't know what you call it, uh, one of the mods that spawn in enemies and stuff like that, there's, there's a bunch of them on the marketplace. You better think this through because you're not getting your munitions until tier 3. So you better either give yourself some at the start or do not add in the mods where you can get attacked right off the, right off the bat. Because, yeah, tier three, right? One. One, two, three. So keep that in mind. Up next is your atomic age. Now, components wise, it's just your advanced assembler. But resources gives you uranium and lithium, and these are your components reactors, lithium power cells, laser emitters, composite plates. And these, I'm not even going to attempt that. Right. Now, the stuff to make is, a lot of it comes from over there, right? Now, last but not least, tier 5 is your space age. Resources, platinum and tantalum. These are your components. And you got one, one assembler, which is your nano assembler. Right. Now coming over here to your power, power, power. I'm kind of flying through this, so I guess we won't make this video as long as it can. So battery, so you got your alkaline battery. This is your start, start of the mill battery. Please note, alkaline batteries cannot be recharged. Once depleted, they must be fully removed and rebuilt. Acid battery, stores moderate amount of power and your battery cells are not reusable. Lithium battery stores large amounts of powers, but your battery cells are reusable. You break down this battery, you can still reuse your cells, right? So, see down at the bottom, right? Lithium power cells, 80 out of 80, you can reuse them. Capacitors, very large, low storage, but extremely high outputs. So what is this good for? If you, This is good for your ships with say capital ships or even your fighters or something or your mining ships where you got all those ion thrusters and you don't necessarily need all the power but occasionally you redline at 100 percent that's where these come into play these give you very high outputs to keep you from running running at that at the 100 percent but they got very low storage amounts 
And lastly, your Electron Matrix Bank. Extremely high amounts of storage and output. Up next, your gasoline and hydrogen engines. We know where these come from. Gasoline comes from the oil production facilities. Hydrogen comes from water, ice. Look up, wind turbine. Bam. You still got your vanilla wind turbine in the game, but now you got this one, right? Huh. Wee, wee. So with this one, wind turbine. Okay, there on the right, large blade and an upgraded generator train, gear train, provide increased power generation. Optimal clearance is 100 meters, and optimal height is 50 meters. So 100 meters. Clearance. This side, this side, this side, this side, but optimal height is 50 meters. Fusion reactor. This is another reactor, self explanatory. And I should note, you also have a fusion thruster, which uses the same thing to detriment fuel to create, uh, well, plasma. It says right there, it's plasma output. Solar. This is your full spectrum solar panel. You still have your vanilla solar panels in game, but this one is just higher output solar panels. Up next is steam. Everything beyond here, it all produces steam. So you got your nuclear reactor. Yes, yeah, so before you just flop your nuclear reactor down, it creates uh, power, not anymore. You got your fast neutron reactor. You got your solar concentrator, right? This spins around and points to concentrate solar to produce steam. And you got your coal boiler. And they are all piped together as so. These are not piped in. Only the only two reactors are. Pipe, pipe, pipes. This is a steam storage tank. Pipe, pipe, pipe. All the way down to your steam turbine. It creates power. And a steam turbine. As you look at there, pressurized steam turbine for generating electricity it must be connected to steam storage. It consumes 50 steams per second and produces 50 megawatts. Last but not least, geothermal system. It produces steam. But, here's the kicker. It essentially produces free steam. Okay, free steam. Produces free power. But, your wellhead must be at least 150 meters below the surface. And if I pull this up, I want you to read that. Produces geothermal heat to produce steam. Must be connected by a geothermal pipe to a geothermal well tip. It produces 7.5 steam per second per 100 meters of well depth below 150 meters. So, it produces not a lot of steam, but it's 100% free. The deeper you drill it, the more steam you produce. This is your wellhead. This must be 150 meters below ground minimum. These are your pipes coming up. And they are relatively expensive. Well, in terms of steel pipe anyways, and that's just understandable. You got a little steel pipe. And this is your geothermal wellhead out the back would be your steam you come out you come out of your steam and I put this over here just so you can see it but you would pop this down somewhere or well bore your hole first right so this would be your floor the connecting point is right here it's the only place you can connect it and then then you got your pipe coming down right so you would need to bore a hole bore a hole bore a hole straight down from your base and the reason being straight down, because remember, things can only be built in 90 degree angles. Unfortunate. Things can only be built in 90 degree angles. So this is something where you would put a drill head on a piston and just bore, 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 down to a minimum height of a... What the heck? Sorry, something just... Flash through my window. It was, I don't know, a car going past or something. And it just startled me for a second. 
and you just pour it down and then you place it when you get to your bottom however deep you want it the deeper you go the better off you are but yeah and like i said i'm going to produce 7.5 steam which is not a lot remember this produces 50 or it takes 50 steam so in order for your geothermal to, to power your steam turbine uh let me do the math let me get out my calculator so calculator 50 divided by 7.5 equals 6.66 .6. oh that's not a good number right anybody superstitious so you will need seven seven of these to power a single steam turbine that's a lot that's expensive it's a lot of work to get it up and running so use geothermal to supplement your steam now, I'm honestly not even sure what your nuclear reactors produce in the, in the way of steam. Hmm, let's just say... Oh yeah, it produces 500 steam per second. So that's, so you could produce, uh, you could power, what is that, 10? And then you got your coal power plant produces one coal boiler produces 100 steam per second and solar concentrate shader produces 0 0.5 steam per second so you would need 20 of these to power a single steam turbine right so you need 20 to power a single steam turbine you would need seven and you could power two and you could power what was it 10 and what's the neutron Oops. and and e duh screw this fast neutral produces 300 so this is what is that six you can produce six of them right so this is your power system so essentially let's do it this way this is your base minimum minimum before you get into the storage this is your your refinery stuff this is your assembler stuff this is your power stuff depending on end up not the whole thing necessarily but it depends on how big you want to go look at that that is your base that's a big base that's a really big base just for your just before you get into storage now, i didn't put a lot of the storage stuff down i didn't put any storage stuff down but let's go through some of this you got aluminum armor you got composite armor you got concrete blocks you got uh armor and windows um, did I say aluminum? Mm, what else? Character weapons, block weapons, all oh, these are your vanilla weapons. You also got conveyor tubes, one way conveyor tubes, so you no longer need a sorter to make stuff go one way. You got access point, that's interesting, I never noticed that before. You got different styles, right? So you got like brackets and such around it. Uh, fusion power. All right, so you got your detriment extractor, and you got your ram scoop. So this is essentially a scoop set out of space, just so it essentially creates free power, if you will. Not a lot, but yeah, only in space. You got your detriment storage tanks, right? Tank, tank, sphere, small, enclosed, sphere, detriment tank, enclosed detriment tank, small, large. You got your fusion thruster, which is, whoa, wow, that's, whoa, 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 wow, 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 okay, that's actually, uh, holy crap, I never actually looked at it before. That's pretty big. Special blocks, nope, uh, large blocks, uh, no, I don't want that. One way conveyors, I mentioned those. Power blocks, I mentioned all the batteries. Uh, you got your solar stuff, geothermal. Hmm, production blocks, yep, we're gonna throw all these. Road sections, as I mentioned, so let's go ahead and see one of these. So 
why are the ramps? Oh, oh, because I grabbed the ramp. Doi. Intersections, ramp, road section, single. Did I grab ramp again? I did. Here we go. Road section. Oh, you want roads? I don't know. Flash structure to dry on. Dry, dry on, right. Drive on. Steam power. We mentioned steam. So you got various kinds of steam pipes. And the blocks went through the uh, window block, mostly vanilla, other than the armored windows. Now, there are also a couple other things in here. So, you guys, wheels, right? So you got metal wheels. Um, where is it? Where is it? That what am I looking for? That's the off road wheel. Supposed to be, right? Supposed to be basic, I think. Mm, maybe not. I thought th there's supposed to be a, sp a special wheel, right? So off road wheels. Wheel suspension. Maybe not. But you got your metal wheel. Oh, yeah, that's probably what I'm thinking of. Um, so, whenever you get first go to build your rovers and stuff, you can't, you don't have access to all this. So, that's what you got this is. You got a metal wheel suspension. So, it works. Easy to build. Worse performance, though, than your rubber wheels. But it's there. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we covered a lot of it. There used to be... I don't see them anymore. There used to be weapons built into the game, into the the mod. So I've been following it for a while, but I never actually used it because I wanted to let it get developed. But my guess is they must have removed them. But that's all fine and dandy because we just had the uh, Warfare 2 update with the new weapons. So this is Fireman Dan. Um, yeah, this is a, a pretty substantial. Pretty substantial mod. There's some things I need to mention about this, so. Uh, comments. Where are they at? Okay. Um, example of mods that will not work, because not all mods will work with this. Mods that alter vanilla blocks, mods that alter vanilla components, mods that alter ore generation will not work. Mods, example of the mods that may work. So you may want to test some mods that add add blocks. The simpler the better. Mods that add NPCs and environmental modifications such as speed mods. Now there is one thing that I skipped over, but I will mention it for you anyways. We have this mod compatibility assembler. Assemblers components and items from other mods. So if you do add a mod in here. See, nothing here. Why? Because it'll go in here. Right, so if you do add a mod in here, you have the ability to make the stuff. Also note, let me go all the way up to the top here. There are there are add-ons. So if I get the mod here, hit to get mod here. Now what do I mean by add-on? Industrial overhaul add-on modules. Right, so the basic mod, deep ores plus spoil everywhere. So your ores are, well, deep. Ore depths range between 100 to 1200 meters depending on rarity. Ore vein thickness has also been increased to approximately 50 meters for all ore types. Combines oil everywhere functionality to add oil sand to the spawn list for all vanilla planets and blah, 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 blah. So deep ores, oil everywhere, it adds both of these to that one. Daily needs. Water mark compatibility. Lock and load. Uh, oh, that's the one, that's why they're not in here, because they moved them to their own little offset. EG ores, makes ores, this EG ores is based essentially Reverts the ores from there wide out to make them closer together. And vanilla replacement and lock and load weapon core. This is for weapon core, but I don't know why you would be using weapon core now anyways because of the new update that just come out. So let's look at the lock and load weapons. 
I don't know why you would want this because a new weapon should just come out, but just know they're here. Light and heavy gravel, so gravel turrets, right? Well, that may be why you want this. So it shoots gravel, uh, but it's not very good. But I mean, it's, it's weapons, right? You got coil guns, you got point defense lasers. So I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to that myself. Cause I thought it was, it used to be in the, in the, in, in, in that original mod. Not so much anymore. But, Fireman Dan, if you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And I'll see you guys on the next one.